Cleopatra was released in 1963 and was directed by Joseph L. Mankiewicz and stars Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, and Rex Harrison and tells the story of Queen Cleopatra VII of Egypt as she experiences both triumph and tragedy while she attempts to resist the imperial ambitions of Rome. Cleopatra is one of the most infamous films ever made and is responsible for nearly bankrupting 20th Century Fox and ending Hollywood's golden age. And upon its release became one of the most expensive films ever made. With a notorious reputation like this, I knew I had to one day sit down and watch this four-hour epic, and I've been meaning to for some time. Several years ago, I actually attempted to watch this, but only got about halfway through and never ended up picking it back up until recently, and I'm very glad I did because this film is right up my alley. For those that don't know me, my personal favorite genre of film will always be the historical epic. I love these sweeping three hour plus films with their intermissions, Shakespearean dialogue, and massive scales. I grew up watching films like Ben-Hur and The Ten Commandments, and I'm always happy to see when Hollywood attempts a new epic in the modern era. I just love these kinds of films, so Cleopatra had to be on that list of movies I needed to one day watch. And after watching Cleopatra, I understand everything I've ever heard about this movie. It is the definition of Hollywood excess. This film is massive and pretty messy. Originally supposed to be two films at three hours each, now turned into four hours of a giant motion picture. However, I think a lot of the criticism this film gets now is strictly due to the film's reputation and the scandal that occurred between its two leading stars and not necessarily the quality of the film itself. Because after watching this, I think this film is pretty great. But before we get into my own thoughts, let's go behind the scenes to see just how this film was made. The film's producer, Walter Wagner, had desired for a very long time to produce a film about Cleopatra and had been interested in her ever since he read the fantasy novel, one of Cleopatra's Nights and other fantastic romances, Plutarch's Life of Cleopatra and William Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. And it wasn't until he saw Elizabeth Taylor's performance in A Place in the Sun when he finally found the perfect person for the role. Wagner had pitched the idea to various film studios such as Monogram and RKO Pictures and even went to United Artists for help. It would eventually be 20th Century Fox who would pick up the film, looking for a big picture to make a comeback on after several box office losses in 1958. Several directors would go on to decline the offer to direct the film, such as Alfred Hitchcock, who had worked with the producer before on foreign correspondence. The film also went through several rewrites before the final film, the original draft being penned by Ludie Clare before moving on to Nigel Balkin, then to Lawrence Dorrell in the spring of 1960. Rex Harrison and Richard Burton were cast in the film in 1960 with Lawrence Olivier and Stephen Boyd being considered for the role of Antony before Richard Burton was finalized. Production of the film initially began in 1960 under Ruben Molian as director with construction of the Alexandria exteriors being underway in the studio backlot and several countries such as Turkey and Egypt were discussed for exterior locations. Production also took place at Pinewood Studios in England, which Wagner feared doing so could jeopardize Elizabeth Taylor's health and found the labor force there was insufficient. Principal photography would finally begin on September 28th of 1960, where Taylor eventually took ill, halting the production as Wagner feared. During the pause in filming, Nolly Johnson was hired to write a new script, but the director and Taylor were both dissatisfied with the script and asked for another rewrite. After 16 weeks of filming and production costs already hitting $7 million, they had only produced 10 minutes of usable footage. With uh, the director being blamed for the imploding budget, he resigned as director in January of 1961. 
Joseph L. Mankiewicz was eventually brought on to direct the film and found the shooting script unreadable and asked to rewrite the script from scratch, which took two months. Mankiewicz consulted the works of Plutarch and Petronius for the script. Filming eventually resumed on September 25th of 1961 on the revamped production. Mankiewicz initially expressed that he wanted to do a two-part epic that would run for three hours each, Caesar and Cleopatra and Antony and Cleopatra. Mankiewicz was still writing the script while filming, so he decided to shoot the movie in sequence, leaving some actors waiting for extended periods of time to film their scenes. Feeling overwhelmed, Mankiewicz hired someone to script several battle scenes and the final 50 pages of the second half. By January 22nd of 62, Taylor and Burton would film their first scene together, and by February, news of their love affair was making worldwide headlines as both were married, bringing bad publicity to the troubled production. The rest of the production was met with many problems, including cancellations of other 20th Century Fox films, as well as reshoots. But the film finally finished principal photography on July 28th of 1962. During post-production, a rough cut of the film ran for 5 hours and 20 minutes. Mankiewicz's idea of a two-part film was shelved in favor of a singular cut that would run for four hours. Producers believed people interested in the Taylor Burton affair wouldn't attend the first installment because they weren't together in it. Mankiewicz butted heads with studio executives, eventually trying to become the sole editor on the film, and eventually this whole ordeal ended with Mankiewicz's removal from the film, which was criticized by both Taylor and Burton. However, Mankiewicz would eventually return to reshoot and add new scenes into the movie to work with the new runtime, and to also strengthen several characters, and by March of 1963, the film was finally completed. Cleopatra had its premiere in New York City on June 12th of 1963, and soon after the premiere, the film's runtime was cut down farther from 244 minutes to 221. Critical reception for the film was all over the place. Some called it the greatest epic of all time, calling it remarkable and beautiful, but it was pointed out by others that the film did have its flaws and lacked much style, and some would go on to call the film disappointing due to an erratic script. Yet, for the most part, the film did receive more positive than negative reviews. But if you would look at the reception for the film today, based solely off of the film's reputation, you will see more mixed reception, which I would like to go into at the start of my thoughts. The film would go on to be one of the most expensive films ever made, costing $31.1 million and wouldn't break even for the studio until nearly 10 years after its release, nearly bankrupting the studio entirely. The movie would go on to win four Academy Awards and be nominated for five more. In an interesting mix-up, Roddy McDowell was submitted to the Academy for consideration for Best Actor rather than Best Supporting Actor, and his role was deemed ineligible for the category, and this couldn't be changed. Now Cleopatra serves as a reminder of the excess of Hollywood and the difficulties of film productions, and perhaps has become more famous for the troubled production than the film itself, which I find to be unfair. But with that out of the way, let's go into my thoughts on the film. Before I actually start with my thoughts on the movie, I want to bring something up that really bothers me when it comes to the bad press surrounding this movie. Due to the troubled production, the sex scandal, and bad press surrounding the film, and the movie nearly bankrupting 20th Century Fox, the film has since garnered this unfair reputation as a movie that's apparently not all that good. If you look at modern reviews, in particular the negative ones, all they talk about is the film's production, as if you can't judge the film without bringing up its troubled production, and they use that as a jumping off point to talk badly about the film. This is a movie that has been destroyed by its reputation rather than the quality of the film's content, and if you go into the film thinking about these things, you're probably going to come out of this movie thinking badly about it because you've been told this movie isn't good. 
but to me at least, that's all a lie. This film shouldn't be judged for anything that didn't happen on the screen. I've also looked at user reviews and it seems a lot of people have bought into the idea that because the film was controversial because of its production, that automatically makes their viewing experience skewed. And I think that's an interesting idea to talk about that's probably a bit too big for this video, but how a film's reputation outside of the movie can hurt the actual product. The film's troubled production and scandals and difficulties have nothing to do with what we see when we watch it on the screen. So please, if you're going to watch this film, I think it's important to look at the film's history and its many problems during production. But that has nothing to do with if the film itself is good or not. It's kind of like Lost, which is one of my favorite shows of all time, and how people incorrectly misunderstood the ending or didn't even watch the finale and only heard things about it and then this whole story comes out that completely misrepresents what that ending even is. It's because of this lost finale is seen by the majority of audiences as a disappointment. But if you were to actually watch the show beginning to end and watch that finale, you might start wondering to yourself, what is everyone talking about? To me, it's a similar situation with Cleopatra. Cleopatra is remembered for its controversy, but nobody actually talks about the content of the actual film, which when you watch it, I think reveals a much smarter and entertaining film than it's given credit for. Now, with that long tangent out of the way, let me give you my thoughts on the film. As I've already said, Cleopatra is already my kind of movie. I love the historical epics that came out during the 50s and the 60s. Anytime Hollywood has attempted to replicate that style of filmmaking and these kinds of movies have a resurgence, I'm there for it. So right from the start, I felt like I was going to be more prone to liking Cleopatra than some others. I love a good historical epic with lavish sets, costumes, big name actors, Shakespearean dialogue, and three hour runtimes. And Cleopatra certainly has all of that, and I absolutely enjoyed every moment of it. Cleopatra is an old school epic, and every bit of it looks so good, it's no wonder this quickly became one of the most expensive films ever made. The sets are massive in the film, from the streets and palaces of Alexandria to the Roman Forum. Each room, each location is painstakingly designed to perfection, giving Cleopatra a lavish quality that the film truly deserves. On top of that, we have the wonderful costumes from the Roman armor to Elizabeth Taylor's wardrobe. Every scene, it seems as if Taylor is wearing a different outfit, and these look incredible and so well designed. The price of the film is practically printed right on the screen. There's one scene in particular to me that stands above all, and it's Cleopatra's entrance into Rome. Not only do you have this massive set, but you also populate that with so many extras all in period clothing, and then you follow that up with several Egyptian slaves pulling a large float that's carrying Cleopatra into the city. It's pure movie magic and something only film could capture in all its extravagance. I love these kinds of old school epics that built these wonderfully detailed locations that you spend so much time in. Scenes in this film go on way longer than they would in a normal film and have something more in common with theater, which is perhaps why I love these kinds of movies so much. It's like seeing a play brought vividly to life with actors taking up these massive cathedral-like structures with the power of their acting to fill the whole room, and this is what happens with Cleopatra. The sets are used very well, and each scene adds so much depth to the characters and story, and it engrossed me so much that the four-hour runtime just blew away for me. The pacing is just great for a film of this length for the most part. As the film progresses, you can feel the strain of the narrative, and it would have made much more sense to split the film into two distinct parts, as they both function very differently, but as is, I think what we have here is very impressive. What's also impressive to me are the performances. I will say, I was a little nervous at the beginning of this film, 
because in the opening scene alone, I found the acting pretty hokey and at times laughable. I was nervous watching it, afraid I was going to find this rather unenjoyable, but the film switched around very quickly after that, and I was into it the rest of the way through the film. The four main performances of this film need praising, and I want to first start with Roddy McDowell, who I actually didn't recognize at first when starting the film. He plays such a minor part early on in the film, but as the second half kicks into gear with the death of Julius Caesar, he quickly becomes a standout, and I found his performance really engaging. In his final speech in the closing minutes of the film, as he talks about Mark Antony, are so well done and bring such life to the character. Next, we have Rex Harrison, who plays a much older Julius Caesar than I feel like we normally get in film, and he performs with such class. Rex Harrison is a master class of acting and manages to turn this hardened leader into a pretty charismatic character. I actually found he played off of Elizabeth Taylor very well, and they have some good chemistry of their own. And then we, of course, have Richard Burton as Mark Antony and Elizabeth Taylor as Cleopatra. And these two are just great. Richard Burton plays a very tortured Mark Antony and doesn't have the same commanding presence as Rex Harrison, which I think helps in setting the two characters apart. Mark Antony is treated as a man, a flawed man, and his performance is just fantastic, especially a final speech at the end of the film, which I found to be just a masterclass in stage acting. He fills the whole room with his presence and steals the scene as he awaits Octavian's march on Alexandria. And his chemistry with Elizabeth Taylor is electric. Their infatuation with each other off the screen, I think, brought a lustful and powerful kind of love to the screen between the characters that really rules the second half of the film. Finally, though, we have Elizabeth Taylor, who is the star that makes this film work. Cleopatra is a fascinating character, and Taylor brings charisma and masterclass acting to a role that is definitely built around her own sex appeal, but that sex appeal manages to not be the performance, but merely an aspect of it, because she's incredible, commanding, and at times ruthless. This is her film, and she should have received more recognition for this movie over the scandal that was happening at the time. This isn't her best performance, which would later come in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, but this is a great performance nonetheless. I also would like to bring up something I feel like isn't discussed enough with this film, and that is the screenplay. I've looked at several reviews for this film, both from professional and unprofessional critics, who scrutinized the film for being a series of exposition scenes and overly talky, and I think that's where the film shines brightest. These scenes are interesting, and I think are precursors to scenes that would later be praised in Game of Thrones when it came to political intrigue. The dialogue is sharp and mixed with a bit of the Shakespearean, which I think gives it some much-needed class. It's also just beautifully written in how characters express their feelings. I adore this film script and think it deserves more credit. Then we have the cinematography. Leon Shamroy served as the movie's director of photography and used the Todd A.O. processing, which Elizabeth Taylor owned. The use of this system did put some strain on filming as the camera was hard to maneuver and the film has been criticized for some of its static shots. But if I'm being honest, while I was watching this, I hardly felt a difference between this and something like Ben-Hur. I think the film manages to produce some really incredible shots and images and the movie itself is beautiful to look at. Where the film does falter, though, is in its scope. This is a massive film, and as you watch, despite the pacing being pretty good throughout a majority of the film, I can tell this was originally supposed to be two films, and as you watch it, you can just tell. I wish Mankiewicz could have seen his true vision come to life, because I think right there is the key to making this film work better than it already does. I also find the transition 
from the Julius Caesar portion of the film to the Mark Antony portion, kind of clumsy. Caesar's death lacks the impact I think it should have when Cleopatra is just shown it in a vision. And if I had one more complaint with the film, it is that somewhere in all the shuffling and larger than life characters, the title character of Cleopatra gets lost as the film shifts between Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Both men are important to telling her story, but there comes a point where it starts becoming their story rather than her story. What's there is great, but I just wish there was more for the Cleopatra character. Overall though, I think Cleopatra is a great film and not deserving of the critical bashing it gets now due to its own illustrious reputation. It's a larger than life film with great performances and a script that I think at least serves its characters well. I just wish Cleopatra herself didn't get lost in all of it. I think this is a movie that is severely in need of a reevaluation so that we can start looking past the production drama and start looking at what's actually there in the finished film. So with all that said, I'm going to give Cleopatra an 8 out of 10. I'm very glad I got to finally watch this film in its entirety and come away loving it. I think Cleopatra is worth people's time and deserves more credit than what it gets. It's a beautiful picture and actually far easier to take in than I originally thought it would be. This review actually ended up being far longer than I originally intended to, but there's just a lot of history behind the making of this film, and I think it brings up some interesting questions about how movies are viewed by the masses, whether you watch the film or not, and what we should be focusing on instead. But anyway, if you've seen Cleopatra, what do you think of it? And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and stay positive.